All right, so we previously looked at and derived terminal velocity for this situation. What we're going to do now is see if we can come up with an expression for the actual velocity and position of this object as it falls. So we're going to assume it starts from rest and see what we can figure out from there. First thing we're going to do is set up Newton's laws, uh, Newton's second law, looking at the forces in here and setting that equal to ma. An important thing here is that I when you're doing these kinds of problems, you want to set the, the direction of the acceleration to be the positive direction. So if it's starting at rest, it's going to be accelerating downwards as we see that. All right, so here's our expression for the net force, the gravity force minus the magnetic force, which we've seen a couple times now. This is going to be equal to ma. And so now we have an equation that we can look at and work with. This is actually a differential equation because, notice, A and V, these can be written in similar ways. I'm going to rewrite this just real quick. Hopefully that makes it a little more clear. So we can see here that the left-hand side depends on V and the right-hand side depends on the derivative of V. And so if we look for an equation that when we take the derivative of it, it looks kind of like itself, maybe plus, plus a constant or something like this. Well, what we're going to wind up with is probably something that looks like an exponential function. Hopefully that's something you've seen now a little bit uh, more in detail. Uh, so we're going to go through the steps here to solve this problem. First thing we want to do is a little bit of separation of variables. So we're going to get all the dv terms on this side, bring the dt over to the other side and uh, try to solve it that way to start off with. All right, so now I've appropriately separated my variables. I've got everything that depends on time on the left, which nothing in here directly looks like it does. And then on the right, I've got everything that depends on the velocity, and it looks like this. Now, I'm going to use some identities here uh, to help us in this case. This is the main identity that I'm going to be using. 1 over x plus a, the integral of 1 over x plus a dx is equal to the natural log of x plus a. And so if you kind of see here, this almost looks a little like that. So I'm going to do a little bit of manipulation to get this so that it looks pretty similar to that. So this doesn't have a coefficient in front of it. So I'm going to do some multiplication uh, to make sure that this v doesn't get any, uh, doesn't have a coefficient in front of it. I'm basically going to pull out a factor of negative b squared l squared over mr out of this denominator. So I've rewritten it here, pulled this out. So now this looks something like uh, x, which I'm using v here, um, minus a constant, which is the same as plus a negative constant. So we've got something that looks a lot more like this. I'm going to rewrite this a little bigger and a little more uh, and, and clean up some of this. So uh, watch here as I, I'm going to take this and bring it back up. All right, here we go. Hopefully you can see where we got to this. I just took this out of the denominator, flipped it over uh, so that it's multiplied out in front. What I'm actually going to do here as well is I'm going to bring this over to the other side just because it's a constant and uh, we can put it wherever we want. All right, and here we go. What we're going to do is integrate both sides, I'm doing a little bit of integration by parts. Since these are all constants, I can just do it this way. I'm integrating from 0 to v because we started at rest as this object was falling, and we're going from 0 to t up to some later time. Uh, so let's go ahead and evaluate both sides. All right, so the left-hand side just becomes this because it would be t minus 0. 
is what we'd evaluate there uh, for that integral. And on the right-hand side, well, we're going to use this identity that we were talking about. So notice this looks a lot like x plus a. Uh, and so what we can say is that this actually just evaluates to be this right here, just the natural log of what we had right there. Um, as long as this stays positive, we don't have to worry about the absolute value in there as well. And I like to do that part where I pull the, the constants out because I think it makes this step a little easier. If you prefer to just do a u substitution and do it that way instead, feel free. Uh, you'll get the same results in the end. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and substitute into this uh, natural log right now. So we've got to do uh, plug in v for v and plug in 0 for v and subtract the two. There we go. And remember, subtracting uh, natural logs is the same as just uh, dividing the internals. All right, there we go. Uh, so now we've got this is equal to uh, minus b squared l squared m over mr times t. Now we can use the definition of what the logarithm is to say that, well, this, this material inside of here is going to be equal to e raised to this exponent. So let's go ahead and write that out here. All right, so here's our equation so far rewritten. What we're going to try and do now is solve for v. What I'm going to do, though, before we get there is actually we're seeing the same constant show up in a lot of places. This uh, m r over b squared l squared. Uh, m r over b squared l squared. These ones have g's in them, but this one does not. So we're going to go ahead and just make a constant that is uh, m r over b squared l squared. And I'm going to call that uh, tau. I'm going to replace all of the uh, all of these in the equation. All right, so our equation gets a little bit simpler here. Now what I'm going to do is uh, solve for v. Multiply both sides by minus g tau. And then add g tau to both sides of the equation. get this equation right here, that the velocity as a function of time is equal to g times tau to the quantity 1 minus e to the negative t over tau. And so tau here is actually a time constant. Surprisingly, this math works out to be almost exactly the same as for a discharging capacitor or a charging capacitor. Uh, the equations are the same. We have this sort of exponential decay or exponential growth up to an asymptote because we're approaching a terminal velocity. Uh, it's the same, this actually math works out the same for a free falling object with air resistance. And we'll kind of come to that uh, again and look at that again. But it's actually is a pretty neat uh, thing here to look at it, and that the time constant is then equal to this mr over b squared l squared in this case. Hopefully you enjoyed that one. Uh, I know that I did. See you in class. Ah, actually, before we go, uh, let's graph this real quick just to make sure that we understand what's going on here. So if we plug in 0 for time, uh, we get 1 minus 1 because e to the 0 is 1. Uh, so this is equal to 0. And as time goes on, uh, eventually we'll get this to the negative infinity, which would be dividing by an infinite number. So we get, uh, we get 0 for this term eventually. So when this is 0, it's just equal to g times tau. So that means that the final velocity is going to be equal to g times tau, which was, is mgr over b squared l squared. Which is our terminal velocity. And in the middle, we get this sort of shape, something that approaches there. And just like with our time constant before, uh, it approaches after one time constant. It's gone through a certain amount of change. I believe it should be about 63% of its final uh, terminal velocity after that 
situation. So here, this object is going to be falling downwards and speeding up until it reaches a constant speed, which it will fall at at least for as long as the bars uh, exist in that situation. All right, hopefully this makes some sense. Let me know if you have any questions. See you in class.